We will be talking about the most important thing I, for my assumption, is now in the modern world, especially during the lockdowns and COVID and all those things which we never experienced before. And this is the leadership. So if you want to make people happy, sell ice cream, don't be a leader. And this is a mantra which you can see everywhere in social media. And people say, you know, leaders cannot make people happy. Leaders, if they sell ice cream, then their staff, their teams will be happy. But I don't have this opinion. I'm pretty sure, and that's why I'm here today, to tell you that the modern leaders can make people happy. And not only their teams in the, in the offices, but also their families, also their friends, their companies, wherever they are. The true leaders can make and must make people happy. A lot of people say that nowadays we have a lack of leaders. And whatever conversations you have with your friends or watching TV or listening to the radio or discussing, then people say, oh, we don't have leaders. Look at the politicians, even look in Bulgaria, look in the United States, all over the world. The current leaders are not leaders. They're very weak. They don't have good messages. But this is why a lot of people speak as leaders, mentioning political leaders. You know, some of you may remember Ronald Reagan or Helmut Kohl or François Mitterrand or Margaret Thatcher or whatever, and people are missing these leaders and they always repeat why they're not here today. But talking about leaders, no one is mentioning late Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of names which are the true modern leaders. And why the political leaders are not anymore actual and they're very weak and they're even so ignorant that we don't even listen to them. First of all, the political system, which for one or another reason we call democracy, doesn't work anymore. And it's more than obvious. This is a topic for another TEDx, by the way, why the political system doesn't work. But this is absolutely obvious. The main reason is that from elections to elections, it takes a lot of time. If you are running a company, or if you are a shareholder or owner of a company, and the company doesn't perform well, then you can change the CEO or the managing director next day. You can fire him or her immediately and uh, appoint a new management next day. If a political leader doesn't perform, then we should wait for the bloody election, sometimes four years, sometimes three years, one option. The other option, which may happen in Bulgaria, is happening in Israel these times, and happening most, most probably in many other countries. You have elections every three, three, four months, which is killing the economy, business, social lives, everything. The second reason, of course, are social media. The ones who know me, they know that I'm a social media animal, and I'm all the time, all social media, you name it, I will not even count them. And social media gave an opportunity to many other persons to be much more famous leaders than the political leaders. Because basically, political leaders, we had one exception in the United States, number 45 president, they are not on social media. But other people are. I think that uh, these days, a taxi driver with a second-hand laptop might be much more popular, or a student with a mobile phone might be much more popular than any political leader. So these days, talking about leaders, we should concentrate on the corporate leaders, on the leaders who are doing business, who are doing successful, successful, successful uh, things which make our life completely different. At the very start of my business, and since then I have really the opinion that the true leaders can change your life with one word. And I just want to say that uh, many times I'm going all over the world to different forums, conferences, and 
One day, a reporter from CNBC in the boss at the forum asked me what do I expect from this forum, and I said, very simple, one sentence. And they were asking, what do you mean by one sentence? So if you remember one sentence, and it's valid for this presentation today, if you remember just one sentence from what I'm saying or the rest of the speakers are saying, then it will be very valuable. So at the very start of my, my career, I went to the US for about a month, crisscrossing from east to west, north to south, and wanted to see my business, public relations, and the United States is the mother country of the public relations business, wanted to see how the things are developing, what are the most innovative trends in the public relations business. So I went to the New York's office of the, one of the largest public relations corporations in the world, Hill & Norton, uh, which I'm associated more than 20 years already. And the CEO of Hill & Norton was sitting in 8 o'clock in the morning in his office, feet on the desk, and having a big American coffee and a donut, and just looking at me, not very much interested. You know, someone from Bulgaria, of course, with a suit and tie, and like the Eastern European at that time businessman. Uh, and then suddenly he said, you know, it's very interesting. We don't have anybody in Bulgaria. Most probably you should meet Mr. Terence Billing. And Terence Billing, good friend who passed away a couple of years ago, my mentor and my teacher in, in public relations, I found him in Frankfurt. Then at the end of the day, we met in a hotel, at Sicherhof, not far away from the Bessel legendary hotel, which was the Hill and Autumn was the very first public relations company coming to Europe after the Second World War, and their office was at the hotel. So we met there. I was dressed. That was my first ever official high-level meeting in my life. So I had a Versace tie and a brand new suit and, and the shirt, and I was bringing them from Sofia just especially to meet this guy in this hotel. So he looked at me and said, hey, we, we cannot talk like that. I mean, he was wearing shorts and Hawaii shirt and the long, long hair, like a retired rock star with the small rounded glasses. And he said, go up in your room, put your jeans and t-shirt and come back to talk. So that's what I did, of course. And we sat down in a restaurant and uh, he was asking about my business. And I was talking, 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 you know, coming from Bulgaria, you know, sometimes, especially 20 years ago, Bulgaria had not very good branding or even lack of branding out of the country. And I was talking about uh, how we are honest and transparent and ethical and how we are professional and doing business, this and that. And then after maybe more than half an hour, he looked at me and said, stop, Max, stop. If you continue like that, you will be going into bankruptcy very soon. And I was really shocked and I said, why? Why? We should... He said, because you did not mention the most important word in business. And this is profit. Profit, profit, profit. He was absolutely right. So that's how. Then we started talking about the pyramid of business. And this is the pyramid which is running my company since the very beginning until these days. At the base, you should have the clients and the experience, know-how. And the bigger is the base, the taller is the peak. And up on the top, the peak is the profit. A lesson learned from Terence Billing, maybe for life. And still then, we are taking very good care of our experience, of our know-how, and then, of course, we're taking very good care of the number of our clients in a way that we should have profits. Last year, at the end of the year, at the end of this crazy, ridiculous year, I sent an email to all my colleagues in the office asking them to share with me the most important words they can have for 2020. After nine months of lockdowns and pandemic and, and Zoom talks 12 hours a day. And then I received a lot of answers like mother, family, patience, uh, lockdown, hope. And they, my colleagues, wanted to know my word. And my word was pragmatism. Pragmatism. 
the, not the big companies will survive. Will survive the companies and the leaders who are very pragmatic and who can adjust their business to the new environment. One of my lessons of pragmatism was a case or a, a story with the late Conrad Hilton, who is the founder of the Hilton Hospitality Network, having an interview with Jay Leno, who you know for sure but passed away a couple of months ago. About 20 years ago, Conrad Hilton was in the show of Jay Leno. And then on a certain point at the end of the conversation, Leno said, Mr. Hilton, you have 25 million viewers all over the United States, and you have 20 seconds to share with them the most important sentence in your life ever. And this is your camera. So Hilton looked at the camera and said, my dear friends, I have a request. When you take a shower, please put the carton inside the bath because a lot of water is going out and it's a wasted water. So this was the most important sentence of life of Mr. Conrad Hilton. So it's a high level pragmatism, which I'm trying with the new environment, with the long, long, long Zoom conversations. And I have colleagues in my office here in the room and they know there are a couple of people I never met in my life and they're our employees and very good employees, but we never met in person. So we should accommodate to a completely different environment. And this is part of this pragmatism. And when they ask one day the same Conrad Hilton, which are the three most important conditions for a hospitality business to be successful, he said, very easy, there are three conditions. Location, location, location. And when people ask me which are the three most important elements of the modern leadership, then I say, it's very easy. Communications, communications, communications. Because with communications, you can do the best things you can do at all in the management of a company, and also the worst things, like fake news, fake communication, artificial communications. A lot of people put emphasis on the communications, and I think this is the best and the most useful and the most important and the most attention, pragmatic point which we have in our businesses. Three things, from my understanding, should be part of the modern leadership these days, 2020, except making people happy, of course. The first one is to know people, people better. And now we have a unique chance to know the people we communicate with much better than before. Sometimes, especially, I'm taking as example, my office and my company, and our company, but also communicating with partners, with vendors, with clients. But with my colleagues, I was meeting in the past once a week in a big conference room. So you cannot see the faces of everyone, 20, 30, 40 people. So you usually see the faces of the neighboring or your managers or board members. But again, that's not as as you wish to do. These days, you have a Zoom call, you see all of them, but not only their faces, not only their reactions and gestures and everything. You see their environment where they live. You enter in their living rooms, kitchens, or balconies, or whatever they talk. So it's a big advantage. And if leaders are very careful, and they watch very careful how, how they're the people they talk with react, then they can know them much better and much better. Number two, learn every day, but read every day. Not just learning, not just browsing. It's, uh, maybe I'm not the best example, but I wake up seven o'clock, have a coffee, and obligatory read one article at least for my business. Then browse all the social media, and a lot of people think that social media is a waste of time, but it's not the case. Social media, for me, means knowledge, nothing else. You can read some stupid things, you can read aggressive messages, you can read fake news, whatever, but we're enough clever to, to, to differentiate 
the fake news from the things which are really interested. So learning is very important part of the modern leadership. And number three, be proactive always. A lot of people, they expect that their employees will come to them, that they will complain, they will suggest, uh, they will propose, they will ask. No way. The leader should be very proactive. They should know the team. They should know the people they communicate with. They must go to them much, much, much before then the employees come to the leaders. By the way, there is a big difference between leaders and managers, and I'm talking now about leaders, because the managers are managing day-to-day -day business. Leaders are looking ahead, they have vision. They take care of much more things than, than the manager. So talking about leaders has almost nothing to do talking about managers. The modern leaders are the people who change. You can change something very small. In Japanese, they have this, they call it Kaizen, and Kaizen means small improvement. And after one month spent in Japan and learning Japanese style of management, it's coming back to Bulgaria, and I was thinking it's very stupid, but it's not. After one or two years, I started reading Kaizen, Kaizen again, because small improvement, you change. Number two, taking decisions. In one of my books, something like 10, 12 years ago, with rules of life and management, number one rule was, worst decision is better than no decision. And I still believe, and after all those years, I think that this is much more important than even before. People must take decisions. If you're hesitating, if you wait for better times to come, or much clearer times, they will never come. So taking decisions every single day is one of the characteristics of the modern leaders. And then, of course, leaders create more leaders. You cannot be a leader, especially modern one, if you work with people who are not more clever than you. And there is a, you know, this message that if you are the most clever person in the room, then it's not your room. And if I'm the most clever person in my company, it's not my company. I enjoy working with clever, intelligent people. So this is absolutely, absolutely important that a leader feels the obligation to create much more leaders. And at the end, don't trust about selling ice cream. You can make people happy in many other ways. If you want to give them ice cream or sell ice cream, do it. But it's not the only way. The best way is to work with a company, to work with employees, to work with partners, colleagues, and to think every single bloody day how to make them happy. And this is the most important thing in our life, happiness. Thank you very much.